This is Andy Peroff, Boxing Social, and I'm joined by Al Siesta, promoter, matchmaker, you name it, and he does it. I hope for the first time, it's a privilege to sit down with you. The morning after the night before, Anthony Joshua reclaims his unified World Heavyweight titles. Talk to me about that headline fight, Al. What was your thoughts on it? First of all, brother, good morning. Congratulations, this is our first interview. I'm congratulating myself, yeah? And let me just switch it off. And uh, I'm incredibly delighted it happened. I wanted that to happen and we've got it now. Fantastic. We're safe, survived and seen another day. <laughs> Talk to me about the fight, Al. What was your thoughts on it? What was your thoughts on Anthony's performance? A brilliant boxing display that he was able to put on away from what we've seen or what we've been used to seeing from his throughout his career. Man, let's don't forget Anthony Joshua is a prolific Olympian, is an Olympic champion. He's shown that he can box. Actually, he had different slightly intentions. He wanted to box and try to hurt Ruiz. But when he saw that Ruiz takes all his best punches, he stuck to his boxing. I would jab him, I would box him, took some in, but it all was like not 100% impact. Survived the fight, got his belts back. Fantastic performance, great performance. Is there anything more that we could have expected from Anthony? Obviously, I know he was very dominant with a unanimous decision victory, but was there anything more that you would have liked to have seen from him? Man, he landed his best punches on Ruiz, and Ruiz was coming like a tractor. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mexican, Mexican track, do you know what I'm saying? So he thought, let me stick to my boxing. So everything we would expect at 100% performance, Anthony Joshua shown. So everyone is really pleased. It was a bit boring in some people's opinion, but that's what it is. This is boxing, man. You take chances, you get banged out. You know what it's like. Do you think that's one of the issues Anthony will have to deal with throughout his career now? He obviously has a big casual following because he appeals to that market. They'll almost expect him to always win by knockout and stoppage. Do you think that's just something he's going to have to deal with as his career progresses? It's all about levels, my friend, because Klitschko was banging everyone out before he's got banged out himself. And then he stuck to that new level, new school that he held for 11, 15 years, dominating. But Joshua is a very exciting fighter. I think it's courses for horses because it depends who he's fighting. If there's someone fragile in front of him who he can hurt, the style will be slightly different. If someone like a tank, like um, Andy Ruiz, he will be doing this kind of job, you know? But I'm so delighted that we're all staying in business. I'm saying we're all British boxing, we're in business, guys. We're back to dominate heavyweight division. Talk to me about Andrew Ruiz. How, how would you assess his performance? By his own admission afterwards, he admitted he never listened to his father and his trainer during camp and he'd been away partying and the fame kind of got to him. What was your thoughts on his performance? Could you see that those aspects affected him? I've seen it 100%. I've seen it. He just he, he's kind of didn't really deal with that professionally. Obviously, it's a massive change in the family, massive change in life, a life-changing experience. But at the end of the day, you're the world champion, unified world champion. You need to stay in shape. You need to stay in focus. You need to pray to God and realize the gift you have from God to be a unified world champion. You can't podge out like that, even bigger than you already were. It's not professional. So therefore, Andy, you learn your lessons. I hope you go back to the gym trimmed up, coming back and hunt your belts. That's what it is. So obviously it affected him big time. He took it for granted, man. Took it for granted. Took it like a street hobo, like a street hobo. And it's a wrong. I, I hope he learned the lesson, you know? Now, obviously, next to Anthony Joshua, he has two mandatories to try and deal with. Kubrat Pulev with the RBF and Alexander <laughs> Usyk with the WBO. Last night, the WBO ordered the fight within, within 180 days of last night's fight. What are your thoughts if AJ Usyk was to happen next? How do you see that one playing out? Let's start about Kubrat Pulev first, because Kubrat Pulev represented by Top Rank. Top Rank are very keen to come to the UK market. That will be a very, very interesting landscape. I do believe possibly um, Bob Barum will plan to put the event himself, and that will be probably the first big coming of Top Rank to the United Kingdom. That's interesting for Matrim and Top Rank. That's another heavyweight clash outside of heavyweights, you know, so that's interesting. In terms of Alexander Yusik, uh, that's where Anthony is going to get tested and 150% because that guy can box, that guy can bang, I'm talking about Yusik, and that will be a biggest ultimate test. If Anthony Joshua will beat Alexander Yusik, he forever will engrave his name as the greatest heavyweight ever lived, in my opinion, outside of Muhammad Ali. Out of, <laughs> out of the current three top heavyweights yeah. with regards to AJ, Tyson and uh, Deontay Wilder, how would you rank them? 
I rank currently probably Anthony Joshua number one now, We're coming back and taking his belts. Then Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder number two together because they had a draw only because of that, because um, they haven't yet proved that super clash and one of them survive and show that he's a real deal. And then probably the rest, like Alexander Yusik and all those kind of guys, you know, Cobra Polyev, obviously, Alexander Pavetkin, and Michael Hansa is in contention. So, yeah, I think Joshua, like this, Joshua, can you see me there? Joshua there, Wilder Fury, and everyone else under. Let's move on to that Hunter Pavetkin fight. You just mentioned both of them there. What was your thoughts on it? A split decision draw? How did you score it? What was your thoughts? Alexander Pavetkin, Michael Hunter, Despite me really wanting Hunter to get banged out, yeah, Michael done fantastically well. He boxed very well. He almost got Pavetkin out early. Then he had him in crisis in round 11. And um, if you ask me, I think Michael Hunter just nicked it. And uh, is draw a bad decision? No, because this probably will see a rematch if they fancy. And uh, they took so many punches both. And Alexander Pavekin, at 40 years old, he is a real warrior. He stuck at it. He was right there, and he showed young generation what is the real heavyweight division is all about. You know, he was the biggest hunter stats today outside of Yusuke at cruiserweight. You know, moving away from that fight and down once again, Dillian White returns after his after UK had said that there was no wrongdoing with regards to an adverse finding found in a, a, a drug sample test from about six months ago. He came back with a unanimous decision victory over Marius Vak. Your thoughts on his win? First of all, Team White, congratulations from me. You got cleared and it was kind of annoying thing, you know, just hanging over everyone. I mean, hence Dillian was a bit heavy, was a bit disheartened, detracted from the gym. I know he tried to stay in the gym. And as I said, Marius Vak is a super competent operator, the man, the Viking, the warrior, came and gave really good performance. I think he had Dillian in trouble a couple of times, but Dillian survived, overcame that, ultimately shown that he is a better level, higher class fighter. But Mary has done exactly what I wanted him to do. I said, all you need to do, just show what you can and give a great performance on the historic night. And that's exactly what happened. So, like a matchmaker who made this fight, I'm very happy with the result. White won, but what shown that he's a real guy, you know. And then once again, moving down to Hergovic Molina, Filip Hergovic with a stoppage victory there. What was your thoughts on that? I, don't, I mean, congratulations to Hergovic. Great win, but I don't think Eric wanted to be there, particularly after he felt the power. It was a bit of a messy win with a kind of so called rabbit punch, but because Eric dived really low, there's no any other way to get him out apart from like hitting the way Hergovic did. But overall, Hergovic done well. I'm really, really curious who he's going to fight next. There are a few guys now, next level, and Hergovic does, does take the punch. I mean, unnecessarily, I've seen it. So let's see what's going to happen. I'm very curious. They can come to me for matching. I sent the list of the names. I think he should fight. Talk to me about that list. Who is on that list? You know, I mean, there's a next stage. Is the next stage. I mean, who we've got there? I mean, think who we've got there. I mean, Christian Hammer, maybe, the people like that, you know. And um, yeah, Hammer would be a good fight. I mean, depends what they want to do. If they want to progress straight away, they can make an offer to Pavetkin. They can make an offer to Majidov. But it depends if they want to get to that stage straight away, you know. I think I think Hergovic is ready for the big thing, you know, for the top 20. So if you look on the box rack, top 20, anyone could, I mean, outside of top 10, Next top 10, that's his opponent, I think. Where's Hogovic now in rankings? I'm not sure. Yeah, he's probably not, not, far, not far off. I mean, Hogovic can do the business with many of the fights in top 10, you know that. I mean, he can fight Dillian White tomorrow. Really? Moving on to the last fight in the heavyweight stat card, Majidov Little, Majidov with a second round stoppage win. You're forward to getting that one out. Concussive animal, isn't he? Tom Little is a great guy, ask him if he's okay after he goes, yes man, but I got caught in the equilibrium place, he's right there and completely lost his balance, but Majidov is a real deal guys, I think, let's see, again, at this stage looks spectacular, let's see what's going to happen, a bit like a Hergovic, same story, so few fights and we'll see, you know, maybe three, four fights, will be very interesting, Div a division is wide open, I'm very, very, very excited, very keen, the division is wide open. Now, before I let you go, because I know you've got to catch a flight, 
The final word to yourself, what would you like to say to everyone? I just want to congratulate Matchroom, Eddie Hearn, all the guys who worked, Paul Reddy, Frank Smith, of course, Barry Hearn, guys. Incredible event, incredible result, and what a business. Fantastic, great gun, great, great choice. Just from the bottom of my heart, it's a great Christmas present for you guys, from God himself. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us all and give us the opportunities. Let's rock together. Let's travel together. Let's conquer the world. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'll see you soon. Thank you for speaking to myself on Boxing Social. I'll see you soon back in the UK. See you soon, brother. See you on 19th at your call. Thank you. Luther Clay, you're coming, brother. I know. Bye.